Namaskaram. <coughs> so let's start with chapter number one of your syllabus, which is basic concept. So though this chapter is called as basic concept, but don't underestimate it. Sometimes it comes for exam for very good marks. And apart from that, the understanding of this chapter will help you to have overall understanding of income tax variable. So what is uh, a learning objective of chapter one? So you can see here, we are going to learn what is component of income tax law, which we have already covered, which is income tax act 1961, income tax rules 1962, uh, annual finance act, circulars, notifications, and some judicial pronouncement or case laws, which are there in overall syllabus of income tax. So this is how overall laws, uh, income tax law get assembled or get formed. Then we need to learn what are the steps to compute total income and tax liability. In fact, I will be focused more on tax liability now because computation of total income is another 40-50 hours discussion. So that we have to understand through our other chapters. But still, I will be teaching you all steps to compute total income and tax liability that we do in article shape uh, uh, for our clients. Yeah. Then some relevant important definition which may be asked in examination for theoretical provisions. So what do you mean by CC, assessment year, person, income, India. So these are the definition that we need to just touch upon. Okay. And some important definition obviously I will be spending more, more amount of time uh, to give, give you a in depth analysis of that particular definition which is relevant for whole syllabus. Then we are having a basis of charge and rates of income tax. Now these two components are most important from this chapter section 4 basis of charge plus a rate of tax. Okay. So why rate of tax are important because the rate of tax they don't provide in exam or in, or usually or they don't provide you can say and therefore you need to learn it by heart okay, uh, to compute tax in examination. So what all we have covered yesterday, what is a tax? So tax, I told you, as I told you, it is a, um, you know, obligation of every citizen, who, every resident to pay tax because they enjoy government facilities. Yeah, it's a cost of living in a society, cost of civilization. This is what we have discussed. There are two forms of tax, direct tax and indirect tax. There is a distinction between direct tax and indirect tax, which is already be covered by me. What is, the, what is the logic behind why taxes are covered? So I told you government provides the facilities like a defense, provision of education, healthcare, infrastructure, road, dams, tunnels, etc. And therefore government have to collect money from citizens to fund these projects. So is it constitutionally valid to levy income tax? So answer is yes. You already know some articles, article 265 which have negative language, no tax shall be levied or collected except the authority of law. Article 246 along with the seventh schedule gives origin to union list, state list and concurrent list. In union list under entry number 82, we are having uh, of list 1, we are having taxes on income other than agriculture income and the power is with parliament. These are the discussion that we have already taken care of. Now, overview of income tax law in India, this is what uh, is covered from my side. What is Income Tax Act, Annual Finance Act, Income Tax Rule, Circular, Notifications. So this discussion we have already had yesterday. So let's skip this part and jump to the today's uh, content. So today a major focus is on levy of income tax which is given under section 4. So what is there in section 4? So this is the concept number 1. Uh, from handwritten notes as I told you all these notes are available on our telegram channel you can just uh, find link in uh, bio and then uh, go to the channel and download these notes along with institute material both are given whatever whatever material I am going to use in the lectures everything will be available on telegram channel you can easily download you don't have to search it in multiple place yeah so concept number one section four charging section is a backbone section of income tax and Look at the language of this particular section. The language says the tax is on or charge is on total income. See, they are not talking about any particular income. They are not saying tax is on salary, tax is on house property. They are saying tax is on total income. And therefore, it is uh, very important to understand what do you mean by total income. Practically, it will take another 40 to 50 hours lectures to teach you exactly what is total income. But yes, we, have, we, are, we are initiating discussion today to understand what do you mean by total income. 
the charge of direct tax is on person okay total income has to be earned by a person in which year sir so it is the, it has to be earned in a previous year and for us previous year is the 1920 which usually begins at 14 2000 Uh, 14 2019 and it ends on 31st March 2020 and from 1st April 2020 already we have commenced a new assessment year in which we are going to write our examination. So total income earned by a person in a previous year shall be assessed in assessment year and as we discussed yesterday, income tax rates are not given in Income Tax Act. They are given in Annual Finance Act. And what do you mean by Annual Finance Act? So budget of particular year. Now, which budget is applicable for us for our examination for, uh, you know, June uh, 19 and uh, November 19 or December 19? Uh, uh, sorry, June 20 and December 20 examination or uh, May May we examination which is postponed to the June now anyhow. So June uh, 20 and November, um, uh, you know, 20 examination. So for e academic year 20, 2020, financial year, Finance Act 2019 is applicable. So whatever data which was given in Finance Act 2019, you must remember because Budget 20 has already been proposed by government. and there is some confusion among the student uh, whether new rates new tax rates are applicable to examination or not so i'm giving you very clear answer here new tax rate which is uh, proposed by budget 20 are not applicable for our examination it will be applicable in examination which will be conducted in year 2021 not now okay so income tax rates are given in annual finance act exception is are there exceptionally some special income is like lottery income uh, a casual income or you know uh, black money uh, income which is aggregation chapter for that income tax rates are given in income tax act but majorly rates are given in annual finance act so mathematically the charging section can be presented like this total income earned by a person in a previous year shall be assessed in assessment year okay total income try to memorize with me it me total income earned by a person in a previous year shall be assessed in a assessment year total income earned by a person in a previous year shall be assessed in assessment year at tax rates prevailing in at tax rates prevailing in annual finance act and income tax act okay annual finance act for normal income okay income tax act for special income okay so all these components that we have written here need to discuss in depth so let's continue with our concept number 2 in concept number 2 we are going to discuss about what do you mean by income and we need to learn definition of income from institute material but here i wanted to highlight one particular point that you need to see see definition of income is given under section 2 clause 24 and income includes so definition of income is inclusive see income tax existed since 1961 but till today government of india is unable to define what is income okay precisely they have defined it but not in a exhaustive manner they are writing it in a inclusive manner the purpose behind it is very clear to make law comprehensive because whatever falls part of the income it is going to be taxable in law and therefore i always say my income tax law is a comprehensive law comprehensive law means whatever incomes exist in this universe all are all those incomes are taxable except except specifically exempted except specifically exempted and that exemptions or those exemptions are given under section then if you watch my index lecture yesterday there also i had explained this particular part that in income tax law is a comprehensive law we we cannot possibly by heart what all incomes are taxable but yes surely we can learn what all incomes are not taxable and the moment you are done with what all incomes are not taxable in the law balance everything is taxable by default everything is taxable the moment you understand section 10 balance everything becomes taxable so there are two types of income that we need to learn in whole income tax incomes which form part of total income and income 
which do not form part of total income okay incomes which which do not form part of total income and um, forms part of total income the moment income forms part of total income there is a charge on total income therefore it is taxable the moment income doesn't form part of total income there is no charge of section 4 on that income therefore it is not taxable this is what i need to tell you so taxable income or scope of total income we are going to discuss in section uh, 5 and incomes which are not taxable we are going to discuss under section 10. Some famous examples I have taken here just for an illustration purpose otherwise this uh, uh, exempt income is a whole overall chapter chapter number 3 that we are going to discuss. But some famous example that you are already aware of by your general knowledge that agriculture income is not taxable in India but which agriculture income friends? Indian agriculture income if question is mentioning about foreign agriculture income it is going to be fully taxable. Share of profit of from HOF Hindu undivided family, share of profit from partnership firm to avoid double taxation these two clause were covered because firm and HOF is already taxable entity and partners or members of HOF they receive the, their share after tax, profit after tax will be divided between partners and we should not take tax again on the same income from partners therefore it is it is been exempted under section 10. Dividend from Indian company is exempted up to 10 lakh. Again, I know there is a proposed amendment in this particular clause, but that amendment is not applicable to our year. For us, this section 1034 exists as it is. Dividend from Indian company. Again, remember, it's not it's not applicable to foreign company. Section 10 clause 34 is applicable only to Indian company. And please try to remember this. Dividend is exempt in India, but only up to 10 lakh. So if you are earning dividend more than 10 lakh, like 12 lakh rupees, then only 2 lakh rupees excess would become taxable. Basic 10 lakh rupees is exempt for everyone. And 10 lakh rupees is a really big number because when, when I do earn income, I have a couple of like investment in share market. I do earn uh, uh, income in form of dividend like 30 rupees, 40 rupees, 80 rupees from a company. So you can understand a person with a couple of lakhs of rupees, uh, you know, uh, investment in share market can earn dividend oh, hardly 300 to 400 rupees per annum. So to earn 10, 10 lakh rupees dividend, he must have invested in hundreds of crores. That means section 1034 or this 10 lakh rupees is giving blessing to majority of share market investors. But there are exceptionally few rich people. They will be taxed. They will be taxed like you know Ambani brothers or Adani brothers or some movie star stars because they are having investment in crores and crores and government is going to take tax from them but tax rate is very low here tax rate is only 10 percent so this is what you need to understand and I wanted to continue with my definition of income uh, from study material we will continue that in another lecture thank you